Autodesk Motion Builder is a powerful specialized character animation tool. Motion Builder is all about character animation, nothing more. There is no modeling, photorealistic rendering, or any advanced texturing tools. Because it is so specialized, it is meant to be used as a central hub for animating models created in other 3D applications, such as 3ds Max or Maya. The idea is to import a character from these applications, rig it and animate it in Motion Builder, then export it back out for final render. Motion Builder has many areas of strength, in particular the way it handles motion capture. Even if you are new to the application itself, you have already seen its capabilities on the big screen. Every time you've gone to see a movie that relies heavily on digitally animated 3D characters, chances are Motion Builder was a part of the process. Many blockbusters like the Matrix and Lord of the Rings trilogies, King Kong and Avatar among many others, made extensive use of Motion Builder. In this movie, you explore some of the basic concepts and areas of the interface so you know your way around. Remember that this movie series is not an extensive tutorial on how to use Motion Builder. It is to understand the workflow between 3ds Max and Motion Builder, and what you need to know to seamlessly operate the two together. When you install and launch Motion Builder the first time, you immediately notice the screen requirements. Motion Builder has a lot of windows, and therefore needs a lot of screen real estate. The default layout for the various windows is called the editing layout. Fortunately, you can rearrange your windows and save them into a layout that works best for your screen resolution. In this case, two layouts have been created to accommodate the 1600 by 900 resolution used to capture this movie. One layout emulates the default editing layout in a smaller scale. The other has been rearranged to favor a larger viewer window. To open or merge a file in Motion Builder, you can use the File menu or the Asset Browser. There are many samples in the Tutorials folder that you can experiment with. Drag the Mia Blue character to the viewer. Choose the FBX Open option. This character is not animated yet, so you can choose the No Animation option to open the file. Mia appears in the viewer in a T-stance pose. A few words about screen navigation. You can use Control, Shift, and Left Mouse button to orbit around, Shift, Left Mouse button to pan, and Control, Left Mouse button to dolly in and out. Furthermore, you can press A to frame all objects in the scene, or F to frame selected objects. The windows are contextual in Motion Builder. In order for these hotkeys to work, your cursor needs to be hovering over the viewer. A double click in an empty area deselects all objects. Control W switches you to schematic view where the navigation hotkeys mentioned a moment ago work the same way. Control E takes you back to the perspective view. There's one last hotkey to mention that you'll find useful. Control A is a toggle to switch between normal viewing mode, models only mode where the skeleton and other helpers are hidden, and X-ray mode where you see the skeleton bones overlaid on top of the body for easier selection. Remember that the cursor must be hovering inside the viewer window for these hotkeys to work. At this time, you are looking at female model that was skinned against the bone skeleton. As it stands, this scene could have been important from any 3D application capable of producing a mesh and a bone structure, such as 3ds Max. However, Motion Builder needs to take that combo package of mesh and bones and turn it into something it can understand. This process is called characterizing in Motion Builder. It is essentially a fancy word for rigging. Make sure the viewer is in X-ray mode and go to Templates, Characters. Drag the character icon to any of Mia's bones in the viewer and choose the Characterize option. Choose the biped option from the dialog that appears, Mia being a two-legged human. That's it. That's all it takes to rig a character in Motion Builder. No need for any fancy constraints, additional helpers or mathematical formulas. It almost sounds too good to be true, and it is even if there are some rules to follow, which you will discover as you view this movie series. At this point, you still need to tell Motion Builder how you want to animate this character. 
Options include simple keyframing or retargeting to a motion capture file. For simple keyframing of the limbs, you need a control rig. This can be selected from Character Controls, Edit, Control Rig. You are then prompted for the type, choose FKIK, this option gives you the most flexibility. Activate the Control Rig to get access to the Character Selection tool. There, you can easily select any animatable limb, even if you set your viewer to Model Only. To make it easier to see which limb is selected, use the Translate tool. This is essentially the Move tool in Motion Builder terminology. You can also access Transform tools by pressing T for Translate, R for Rotate, and S for Scale. Remember to keep your cursor over the viewer when you use these hotkeys. In Translate mode, move Mia's left hand slightly in X and Y. Notice that when you go beyond an arm's length, how the full body reacts to that motion. This makes it easy to place your character in any pose you want. If you want, you can even pin limbs so that they remain static when the rest of the body is in motion. To select multiple limbs, use the control key. You can then choose to pin them in translation, or and in rotation. The reference node enables you to move the character to a different location. This is a brief introduction on how to use the control rig. Another way of animating a character is by using motion retargeting. Set the viewer to X-ray mode. From the Tutorials folder, drag the iSlip file into the viewer. Choose FBX Merge iSlip. A yellow skeleton appears. It is animated to take a few steps then to slip and fall. You can use this animation to drive another character. Merge the gremlin character in with no animation. Unlike the Mia model, this gremlin has already been characterized and is ready for animation. However, you will not use a control rig here. To make the gremlin follow the skeleton, choose the gremlin character in the character controls window. Choose Edit, Input, Skeleton 2. The gremlin now moves like the yellow skeleton. Because of its size, the gremlin takes smaller steps to accommodate the motion. This is another area of strength that you have in Motion Builder. You can even scale your character up and down in real time and see how the animation adjusts to that change. In the next movie, You'll learn a few rules of thumb pertaining to character setups using bone skeletons in 3ds Max prior to export to Motion Builder.